In today's video I'm going to show you how to create this digital badge for Physics 101 students that have completed the course. It's a little bit more complex than the previous digital badge we made, but I think it looks a lot more professional and it's a little bit neater than the one we did create in the last lesson. So let's head over to Adobe Illustrator and get started. First thing we need to do is make ourselves a new document and we'll call it Physics, whoops, caps lock on, Physics Digital Badge. We'll set it up for print. So we'll have one artboard, it's an A4 document in landscape mode. Turn on a 3mm bleed. Uh, we'll be CMYK color mode, 300 pixels per inch. So when we do print this, it is in high quality. We'll click OK. Okay, so here's our artboard ready to go. First thing we're going to do is hold down our rectangle tool and select the polygon tool. We'll then click once in the middle of the page somewhere. Make sure we've got a six sided polygon and click OK. And you'll see a hexagon appears on your page. Just use your black arrow to hold shift and resize that. And also hover off one of the corners, hold shift and give it a rotate two times so you get the pointy part at the top. It's going to look something like that once you've rotated it. Now you want to give this shape a fill color to begin with. So first of all turn your stroke off over here. Select your fill color and bring that to the front. And you want to choose a nice dark purple. Okay, I'm talking pretty dark, almost black purple, something like that. Okay. Once you've got that, I just want you to grab your direct selection tool now. Make sure this is still selected. And you'll notice that these little circles appear on each corner. All you need to do is go to the top one, click and drag down just a little bit, and that will round out those corners. I would like rounded corners for this shape. Okay, so that's looking good. Next thing I'm going to do is click on the shape, go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in Place. So we've now got a second shape, exactly the same on top of the original. I'm going to hold Alt and Shift, and with my black arrow just resize it so it's a little bit smaller. I'll say about there. Now what we're going to do is change the colour of this shape. We're going to choose a lighter purple colour. So let's go through our colour box up here and... I think that's a pretty good looking colour, might even go a bit darker, still, well not that dark, might expand this a little bit so it's a bit easier to spot the colours that I want, um, something like that's a good colour, okay so now you've got two hexagons on top of each other there with two different colours, just click on the smaller hexagon now and go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place. So we've got two smaller uh, hexagons there now. And what we're going to do is choose an even lighter purple for this one. So I'm going to keep going up until I get to about, we'll say about there. Now if we just go back and look at the example, I've got two colors in my background here. Darker on the right, lighter on the left. So we need to remove half of this hexagon I just drew to reveal the darker one on the right and leave the lighter one on the left. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go over to my pen tool and hold my mouse down on it and select the delete anchor point tool. Over the right hand side of this shape we've got these little anchor points. I'll zoom in a bit so you can see these little blue squares. We need to click on them when it comes up with the word anchor. That's simply going to remove them and start revealing the shape behind it. It doesn't quite get in the center. So what I'm going to do is add an anchor point, zoom in here so you can see what I do. I want to add an anchor point right in the center there. So when we get to intersect, click once and it will add an anchor point in there. I can choose my delete anchor point tool now and just delete this one over here. And it connects up with my middle anchor. I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom and do the same thing. So first of all I'll grab my add anchor point tool hover around the middle when that green guide comes up and says you're in the middle click once then go back and grab your delete anchor point tool and delete the little anchor on the right here okay it's a little bit curved this line but that's not to worry if I zoom out see it's pretty good and we've got that split down the middle now with the two different colors so it's looking nice last thing I want to do is put a white border around the outside of these two shapes that we just added in so I'm going to click on the bigger darker hexagon and do the copy and paste in place thing again 
Now what I'm going to do is remove the fill color. So the fill needs to be gone. The stroke, it needs to be white. And it needs to be three point in size. So up, the, up the top, change the three point. Holding Alt and Shift, you're going to resize it down so it just snaps on to those other shapes. I think this darker one's a little bit too fat now, so I'll resize it by holding Alt and Shift and just making it a bit smaller too. Maybe a little bit too small that was. Very fiddly process, but when you get it right, it does look nice. So take the time to get that looking good, and it should be looking something like this. Next thing I'm going to do is add a banner through the middle. And the way I'm going to add a banner is over here in my tools, I'll grab my rectangle tool. Now I'm going to hover around the center of the page here until I get the center point with my guides where it says intersect. Generally that's the center. I'm going to hold the Alt key and click and drag out. I'm not going to go too far off my page. I'll say about there looks good. And I've already got the right color. Make sure you get that really dark purple as your fill color that matches the back color here. If I grab my eyedropper tool from my toolbox, I can actually click on any of these colors and choose which color I want to be my fill color for this rectangle. And I do want that dark one. The other thing I want to do is get a stroke on it. So click on your stroke color here. Now, it's an interesting one, this stroke color. I don't want it to blend in with these two lighter colors. I'm going to make it really light purple. So what I'm going to do first of all is just select, well, let's say, this purple here. Okay, doesn't look very good. So what I'm going to do, whoops, double click, just double click on that little purple swatch. We can adjust it. Let's make it a bit more pink. So I'll bring it out this way. I'll move this slider and make it a bit lighter. Even a little bit lighter still will look good, I think. So when you get this color here, let's just click on OK. And you'll see that little swatch has changed now to that light pink color. If I bump my stroke up to, say, three point, yeah, that stands out nicely off all those other purples, so that's looking quite good. The other thing I want to do is just round off these corners on this rectangle. So click on your shape once with your black or your white arrow, either one will work. And just grab one of those little white circles and slightly drag it in, just so you've got ever so slightly rounded edges. Okay, so that's looking good. We want to put little tails on this ribbon. And the way we do that is grab the rectangle tool again and simply draw a rectangle over the top here. It's got the same colors as inside on this big rectangle, so leave them as they are, that's fine. We're not going to round off these corners, we're just going to move it into position roughly like that. Might even go a little bit longer. Okay. Once you've got it like that, click on it once with your black arrow and go over to your Add Anchor Point tool. And what you're going to do is find the center of the shape. I'll just zoom in a bit here so we can see what's going on. Find the center of the shape, go across to the left, and click once on that left side of the shape. That adds a little blue anchor point. Do the same for the right. So find the center, go across, click once, and that adds a little blue anchor point to your page. You can grab your white arrow now, which is your direct selection tool. Hover over those little anchor points and just drag them in a little bit. This gives it that ribbon kind of effect. Now it's going to look better if this part of the banner is behind the main part. So once you've clicked on this, either with your black or white arrow, you need to go to your layers panel. Okay, so I can't see my layers panel over here anywhere, so I'm going to go to window, choose layers, and just expand on this layer. And you can see all the bits and pieces that are used to make up my document. I'm going to grab this top path, which is this one here, just drag it down below this main part. If I just zoom back out now and I'll hide this layers panel for a minute, that's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to copy this, actually I won't even copy it, I'll click on it once with my black arrow, hold the Alt key, click and drag off, and hold Shift just to move that duplicate copy over to the other side. You will need to rotate this 180 degrees. I'll need to come out a little bit more. 
there we go. So make sure you've got both sides matching. If you think it's a little bit too tall, highlight both those shapes and just resize them a little bit. You should have something similar to that. So it looks like a nice banner running through the middle. Okay, we're going to put some text on top of this banner. So grab the text tool. And just click and drag a text box inside of there. And I want you to write the word physics 101. And mine's coming out black, so I'm going to have to highlight that and change the color to white. I'm also going to change a few other properties at the top here. I'm going to change my font to impact. Uh, I'll make it pretty big, size 72. Look good, might even go a little bit bigger there actually. Size 80. I'll center align it. Okay, so I'll just move that around a bit until I'm happy with how it looks. Yeah, that looks quite nice. So that could be a badge just as is like that now. That looks pretty good. But what I'm going to do is add a little bit more detail and put some symbols or scientific related symbols at the top and bottom of the badge. Now the cool feature in Illustrator is that we've got some symbols over here in the symbols panel that have already been drawn for us. So look for your symbols panel. If you can't see it, go to window and select symbols. What you can do with these symbols is simply pick them up and drag them onto your page. Okay, and you can resize them, color them. They'll never lose quality and you can use them all you want in your designs. So what I'm going to do is go to my library down here and I'm going to look for the mad science symbols. Okay, so there's some symbols related to science. The ones I want is the first one, okay, it's an atom, and the second one is a flask, so drag that out as well. Then you can just close off those symbols panels for the minute. What we're going to do is edit these shapes. I'm just going to take the color out of them really, so I'm going to make this nice and so we don't want it too big. We want it to go down the bottom here and fill up this gap. So I'll just resize it a bit. Make sure it's in the center. So probably about there will look good. So I'm going to zoom in here on this flask for a minute and show you what I'm going to do. I don't like the colors. So I'm going to double click on it. And what that does is brings our flask into isolation mode. From here you're able to pick up certain parts like those little circles and delete them. I'm going to delete this yellow and orange border as well. I'm going to double click on this liquid inside the flask and delete it as well. Just press the back arrow up here to exit out of isolation mode if you want. And while I am still in isolation mode, what I'm going to do is add those bubbles back in by using the ellipse tool, but I'm going to make them white. Okay, so I'm going to choose my color white. And I'm just going to draw, holding shift, one circle there slightly smaller circle there and an even smaller circle up there. That looks good. And the other thing I want to change is the stroke color on this shape. So just click on it once with your black arrow up to the strokes here and I'm going to choose that pinkish color I used earlier on for my banner. Same goes for these black lines coming through here. So let's click on the black lines and change that stroke to that pink color as well. Press the back arrow now, which will take me back out of isolation mode. That symbol looks pretty good down there now, as it is. The other one we've got is this atom. Okay, if I zoom in on the atom, a bit too much going on there as well, so I'm going to double click on it to bring it into isolation mode. I'm going to click on the green part and just press delete. That was the purple part. I'm just going to have to move this across so you can see what's going on. Actually, no, I won't do that. I can see that it's there. It's just white. It blends in with my background a bit, but that's all right. I know it's there. I'm going to delete these yellow balls. And to delete this grey one, I'm going to actually have to double click on it and delete it. Now I can press it back, back, and over here somewhere I've got my symbol hiding. If I drag it on top of my page, you can see it again. So I'm going to move it across somewhat, rotate it twice, so it looks like that. Put it in the center so it's measured up nicely with the rest of our page. There we go. Um, I think I might make this pop out a bit more by adding a stroke to it. So I'm just going to double click on it. I'll give it a stroke as well. So that pink stroke. How does that look? Mm, a little bit too thick. So let's make that stroke 
0 0.25 point in size. That looks nicer. So I'm going to press back. Yeah, that looks good. I might make it a little bit bigger still. Nudge it around with my arrow keys as needed. I'll press Control 0 when I'm done for a look at the page. Okay, I can't see anything wrong with that. I think everything looks great. So that's our digital badge finish for the Physics 101 class. Go to File, Save As, and I'll just go onto my desktop where I've got my folder. Uh, topic 1. Make a digital badge, and I'll call it Physics Digital Badge. Click Save. When this box appears, click OK, and you're all finished.